Hi everyone, Patek here. Uh, for today's video, it will be my October book haul. So today I'm going to show you all the books that I got within the month of October. And this month, I managed to get 14 physical books, which is a lot. That's, that's a lot of books. And I'm going to begin immediately by telling you all the books that I bought first. And the first one that I want to show you is Empire of the Vampire by J. Kristoff. This is the first book in the M Empire of the Vampire trilogy. Yeah, I think that's the name of the series too. So yeah, this one, I honestly have pre-ordered this book since last year. Yeah, I have pre-ordered this book since last year. It's been a long time and I finally have my own copy. This is uh, honestly one of my most anticipated book of the year. And look at the cover art. This is, this is so beautiful, right? Uh, this one has the cover art done by Kirby Rosanes, which is one of my favorite cover artists. And the US cover art is beautiful as well. The one that's done by Jason Chan. I love that cover art too, but Honestly, I prefer this one because Kirby Rosanes, in my opinion, is one of the greatest cover artists and he somehow doesn't do a lot of cover art and I love this one. I really love this cover art. Look at it. So beautiful. And what made this book even more awesome, uh, other than the gorgeous cover art and the great premise, which I will get into uh, in a while, is that this book has a lot of interior artworks. So yeah, I'm going to show you one example here. Ta-da! So beautiful, right? I've wanted to read this for quite a while now, and Sarah from Sarah Reads, I think, did a great job on reviewing this book. And for those of you who don't know about this book, well, this is the premise. It has been 27 long years since the last sunrise. For nearly three decades, vampires have waged war against humanity, building their eternal empire even as they tear down our own. Now, only a few tiny sparks of light endure in the sea of darkness. Gabriel de Leon, half man, half monster, and last remaining silver saint, a sworn brother of the Holy Silver Order dedicated to defending the realm from the creatures of the night is all that stands between the world and its end. Now, imprisoned by the very monsters he vowed to destroy, the last Silver Saint is forced to tell his story. A story of legendary battles and forbidden love, of fate loss and friendship won, of the wars of the blood and the forever king, and the quest for humanity's last remaining hope, the Holy Grail. This has often been, uh, I think, pitched as the name of the wind by Patrick Rothfuss, made interview with the vampire and also the witcher. So, yeah, I personally, I'm personally not too much of a fan of this myth, this myth, this, but, well, I have to also say that it, this kind of pitch do get its job done. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to reading this one. This is the spine, this is the back cover. And you should also see the naked hardcover. See? So beautiful. There is a lot of edition for this one and practically I think all of them were sold out in minutes. It's incredible. I hope that this book will live up to expectation and I think I will read this one uh, next month. The second book that I bought is Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. This is the second book in the Strange the Dreamer duology. I I think that's the name of the series as well. This is a YA duology. I haven't read Strange the Dreamer yet, but I've heard a lot of great things about it. I don't usually buy many YA books, but I think for this one, I'm going to make an exception because a lot of adult fantasy readers I know have read this duology and loved it. And somehow, uh, this book is signed. It's signed. It's so weird. I never got a signed book from buying from Book Depository, but this one is signed. And it's also first edition, so yeah, that's a huge plus. I don't think I will be able to get to this one within this year, so yeah, one day. Then the next book that I bought is Assassin's Apprentice, the illustrated edition. Well, to be honest, I already owned, I already bought the UK edition a long time ago, I think two years ago. But I decided to replace it because I don't like the UK edition. The interior artworks inside this book are gorgeous. And yes, it is the same in the UK edition as well. But the placement of the art in the UK edition doesn't match the text. They're placed so randomly. This is the US edition and Royal Assassin and Assassin's Quest that I have are also US edition. So I'm just buying this one to match my copy and collection. If you haven't read Farseer Trilogy, I highly recommend the illustrated edition because it is beautiful and the interior artworks is done by Magali Villeneuve, which is, again, one of my favorite artists. I have talked about Magali's artworks a lot on my channel and she is doing the entire, uh, the entire Farseer Trilogy. I'm really hoping that Del Rey and Harper Voyager one day will do uh, live ship traders as well because there are a lot of uh, special edition for Farseer Trilogy but somehow for live ship traders and beyond there seems to be no special edition which is sad because Farseer Trilogy although it was good 
it's probably the second weakest of the entire series in the realm of the Elder Links, in my opinion anyway. And then the last book that I bought is the Manhua and it is a solo leveling volume 2. This is one of my favorite Manhua of all time and I'm still so happy that this is actually getting a physical copy and it's also being officially translated into English. This is an amazing Manhua. This is, uh, in my opinion, overpowered main character story done absolutely right. And the artwork is terrific. Look at it. Everything inside this book, everything inside this volume looks as gorgeous as the cover art. Seriously, this is an amazing manhua and if you haven't read it, I highly recommend this one. Now moving on to the gifts that I got from my friends and the first one I got is uh, On Writing by Stephen King. This one is sent by Sarah from Sarah Reads. Again, a great booktuber. I will link her channel down below in the description. And I haven't read this one. I have no idea whether I will love this or not but I think a lot of writers have mentioned that this is a great autobiography about writing and yeah, I think I'm going to eventually read this one. I'm not sure when yet, but eventually I will. And then the next book that I got again from Sarah is Watership Down by Richard Adams. I have to admit that I haven't read this one. This is a beautiful cover art though. Look at it, right? So beautiful. And Sarah has mentioned how much she loved this book. Well, considering that this is one of, one of her favorite books of all time, I think. And a lot of people have mentioned just how good this is. Well, I think I will have to read this. I mean, I already got this book too. And this is a beloved classic and one day I will find out why. Then the next book that I received from my friend, this one is uh, sent by my co-blogger. It is The Wisdom of Crowds by Joe Abercrombie. This is the US edition. I've already mentioned just how much I love this book. This is one of my favorite books of all time now and it is such a great conclusion to the Age of Matters trilogy. So the US edition has the cover art done by uh, Sam Weber, which is one of my favorite artists. So that's practically the main reason why I collect this trilogy in US cover art as well because I already own the UK edition too. I don't usually buy uh, both US and UK edition to a series. I don't think I've ever done that before. This is the first one. This is the first time that I own both the US and UK edition for an entire series and I'm really thankful that Emma got this book for me. And now I'm going to show you all the books that I got from publishers and well this one is related to the previous book. Well it's technically the same because again this is The Wisdom of Crowds by Joe Abercrombie and this is the UK edition. As I said, now I have both US and UK edition of the Edge of Matters trilogy and I'm so thankful. Again, Joe Abercrombie is one of my favorite authors of all time and yeah, having a collection of his books means a lot to me because the First Law trilogy and the entire First Law world, in my opinion, is the best grimdark fantasy series of all time. Thank you so much to Golangs for sending this to me. And then the last book that I got from a traditional publisher is The House in the Cerulean Sea by uh, TJ Clune. This is the UK paperback edition and I've heard a lot of great things about this one but honestly, I'm still not sure whether this is for me or not. I've heard that this one is very sweet, very wholesome and Maybe this is like Becky Chambers books? Maybe? I'm not sure. I haven't read this. I haven't read this, but considering just how well loved this book is, I think I have to give this one a try. And speaking of TJ Kloon and the house in the Cerulean Sea, I have a surprise giveaway provided by the publisher and it is for this book. And if you want to be entered into the giveaway, all you have to do is leave a comment down below. And this is a UK only giveaway. And now we move on to the final section of this book haul and it is for sub-published books. And the first one that I want to show you is Spirits of Vengeance by Rob J. Hayes. This is one of my favorite books and this one, I mean, just take a look at this. This is amazing. Not only this is an amazing book, but this looks absolutely stunning. Look at the cover art. This one is done by Felix Ortiz. A great guy and a great artist and I honestly think that this is his best cover art so far and you know I've read this one I think this is Rob J. Hayes uh, best work so far just so good it is 600 pages long and look at this oh look and look there is my name too I'm so thankful that Rob J. Hayes included my review for I think that one is for Never Die on the back cover of this book and yeah just like many uh, sub-published hardcover now this one also has a unique design behind it. Ta-da! Oh, sorry. Ta-da! <laughs> so beautiful, right? This is, this is the spine. And this is the back cover. So gorgeous. And, uh, and also, this has interior artworks done by Stas Borodin. Hold on, I'm going to show you one here. Ta-da! And there are more. There are more to this, but 
again, you should find out for yourself. And this is a great book. And you know, there's something that's so interesting about this one is that every chapter begins with a black page. Look, it's stunning. I think this is uh, Rob J. Hayes' first hardcover and it is a success. Definitely a success. So beautiful. Thank you so much, Rob, for sending this to me. And yeah, look at it. It is signed as well. And then I also received uh, The Fall by Ryan K. Hill. This is a novella. This is a very thin one. It's only about 80, 80 pages long. Hold on, let, let me check. Yeah, it's only about 80 pages long and it is uh, gold spray edges. Can you look at this? This is a wonderful novella, even though this is only about 80 pages long. I think it managed to pack a lot of stuff into this. It is a great fantasy. There is dragons, there is magic sword. There is night, and this one revolves around a siege. It's also good, and it really sparked my interest into reading uh, the main novel, which uh, I was going to read within this month, but I, I, I didn't manage to get to it. I'm going to move of Blood and Fire into uh, my November TBR. And if you're looking to get this one in physical copy, I highly recommend you to get the hardcover because, well, there are two interior artworks here, and they are beautiful. Here, I'm going to show you one of them. Can you? Yeah. And the interior artworks are done by Aaron K. Hill, which is the author's brother. And then the next book that I got is Ringlander, The Pat and the Witch. This is Michael S. Jackson's debut. Honestly speaking, I have received a paperback copy of this one from the author as well, but, well, I still haven't got around to it. And now I have received the hardcover as well. I hope I will be able to get to this one as soon as possible because, well, this is a beautiful looking book. Not only this is a beautiful looking book, I've heard plenty of great things about this, especially from my friend Philip Chase. Philip Chase has done a great review on this book, and yeah, you should check out his review if you're interested in giving this one a try. In addition to this book, I also received a few uh, artworks, a few cards with artworks, I think, from inside the book. So yeah, this is an amazing edition, amazing sub-published hardcover again, and in the naked form, well, I think this one... Yeah, it has the cover art, but no typography. It's beautiful. The cover art is done by John Anthony Di Giovanni. I love his artwork so much. John Anthony Di Giovanni is a great artist. We only have two books left in this book haul, and the next one is The Look of a King by Tom Dumbrell. I haven't read this. This is a small looking hardcover. I think it's about 200 pages long. And this is the first book in Pillars of Peace trilogy. And the premise is about two young men, one with a dark press and the other with a bright future. Cyrus is a storyteller frustrated by the mundane trappings of village life, while Prince Augustus struggles to meet high expectations after an upbringing of royal privilege in the bustling capital. As both try to forge their own paths, a royal assassination unexpectedly closes the gap between them. The nation of East Haven is thrown into war with their oppressive neighbors, and so begins a conflict from which neither can walk away. Will a young prince finally measure up to his destiny? Will a storyteller create a legend of his own? Cyrus and Augustus' lives may seem worlds apart, but perhaps they aren't so different after all. So that sounds great to me, and on Goodreads, this has been receiving plenty of good reviews, and I'm looking forward to reading this one someday. The last book on this book haul is Illborn by Daniel T. Jackson. This is the first book in the Illborn saga. This one is a chonker. Look at this. This is massive. And this is 700 pages long. Illborn so far, even though this is still very under the radar and underrated, but the reception for this book, if you go into Goodreads and you open this, uh, the page for this book, every review, five stars. Practically every review are five stars. And you know, because I'm curious, after I received this book, I read the prologue just, well, to test the water, and I'm in love already. I'm in love with this book already just from the prologue, and I know that I'm going to love this one. And this is the premise of the book. Long ago, the Lord Iduel emerged from the deserts of the Holy Land, possessed with divine powers. He used this to forcibly unite the peoples of Angal before his ascension to heaven. Over 800 years later, in a medieval world which is threatened by war and religious persecution, four young men and women began to develop supernatural abilities. These forbidden and secret powers will shatter the lives that they have known, and will force each of them to confront the mystery of the ethereal gate which haunts their dreams. What does their dream mean, and how is it connected to their burgeoning abilities? As they experience conflict, love, lust, and betrayal, in lands which are being overtaken by war, they must try to stay ahead of and to survive the sinister forces which are now pursuing them, for they are being hunted. Just from that premise and from reading the prologue, the writing is so good, I'm going to be reading this one as soon as possible, probably before the end of the year. 
So yeah, that's it for me today. Thank you so much to every author, every publisher, and every friend who sent these books to me. I truly appreciate this. And yeah, 14 books uh, within a month to me is a lot of books. That's a lot of physical books. And I'm running out of space, but well, I think this is a good problem to have. <laughs> so yeah, that's all from me today. Let me know which books uh, on this book haul looks interesting to you. And let me know your most recent book haul. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye.